In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared, the only artifact to conveniently go missing and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. It seems that these highly talented, acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth or indeed how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains, may settle this once and for all. The Great Sphinx of Egypt is the largest stone monolith statue on Earth. It took nearly 20 years to fully excavate the Great Sphinx. Since this time, the Sphinx has undergone a lot of restoration, no longer taking on the appearance of being unfinished, or to the keener eyed, severely eroded. Why alter such an important artifact? Why not preserve them in their found state? After all, we have no idea of what the builders initially intended them to look like. Just how old are these statues? Are they even older than the pyramids? I tend to suspect yes. Not only do they show evidence of millennia of rainfall, but also submersion under salt water. But the most intriguing fact about the sphinxes is their hidden openings. Openings I suspect were the reason for the quote, restoration. One of the outcomes of these modern manipulations upon the most important ancient monument on Earth was the concealment of hidden passages that dot the Sphinx's design. Many initial reports of the Sphinx included details of three or four openings around the Sphinx leading to complex tunnel systems, containing tombs with alien artifacts. Something within these tunnel systems prompted the Egyptian government and even the CIA to step in and restrict access on the grounds of quote, the nation's security. 
what is a sphinx? Why choose this creature to devote such effort into creating? A strange story about the Great Pyramid of Giza appeared in the March 2000 issue of the Egyptian magazine, Rose El Youssef. According to the article in 1988, French Egyptologist Louis Caparat discovered an alien mummy within a secret room found in a crystalline transparent case. It was believed to be a hybrid, which is a mix between an extraterrestrial race and human DNA. A papyrus found near the body tells of this being's encounter with the pharaoh Khufu. According to Ancient Code's anonymous source at the Egyptian Antiquities Department, the mummy of what appears to be an alien had inscriptions upon the tomb that showed that this was being a counselor to the pharaoh and was named Osirune, meaning star or sent from heaven. The body was said to have been buried with great respect and care and was accompanied by a number of strange artifacts made of a synthetic material that is not found in any other Egyptian tomb. Also, the source claimed it's unclear what sex it was, but it had unusual reptilian type skin, no external ears and overly large almond shaped eyes. The source claimed that the discovery has caused great controversy among Egyptian officials who want to keep it hidden until a plausible explanation for the strange mummy can be made. Numerous select specialists have visited the site. Regardless of the wild claims, there are indeed tunnels beneath the Sphinx and they have been covered up by authorities for some reason. According to author Peter Tomkin in his book Secrets of the Great Pyramid, some Arabian authors have reported that Al Mamun found a sarcophagus with a stone statue in the shape of a man. They say that within the statue lie a body wearing a breastplate of gold set with precious stones, an invaluable sword on his chest, and a carbuncle ruby on his head the size of an egg, which shone like the light of day. With many of the tunnels beneath the Sphinx being unexplored, but according to geophysical surveys, containing large unknown metal objects, it is only a matter of time before Egypt's secrets are out in the open. Thanks for watching guys, take care. Arce, the American Research Center in Egypt. Arce's website states as follows. Among Arce's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. Arce is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's Chamber at the Great Pyramid, using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors placed close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by Arce, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries, published within the Du Service des Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. 
Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton, The Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balville have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the Secret Chamber's existence. The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and sphinx existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arsi. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. Alexander the Great was a member of the Arjad dynasty. He was born in Pella, central Macedonia in Greece in the year 356 BC. He succeeded his father Philip II to the throne at the age of just 20 and spent most of his ruling life on continuous military campaigns through Asia and Northeast Africa. In just 10 years, by the age of 30, he had successfully created one of the largest empires of the ancient world, stretching from Greece to India. Undefeated in battle, he is widely considered history's most successful military commander. The final resting place of this Macedonian king is one of the greatest mysteries of ancient history. No one has apparently been able to locate any evidence to suggest where he could have been buried. Recently, however, archaeologists claims that the actual tomb of Alexander was discovered and that this discovery was blocked by the Greek and Egyptian governments and has been ever since. Alexander died in a mysterious death at the age of 32 in Babylon in 323 BC. He had been holding a memorial feast to honor the passing of a close friend when he suddenly suffered intense pain and collapsed. He was taken to his bedchamber where, after days of agony, he fell into a coma and died. Scholars still debate the cause of death. Alexander was embalmed and a golden chariot was built to transfer his body to the sanctuary of Amon. When the procession made it to the border between Syria and Egypt, it was met by Ptolemy, who stole the body. Its location along with all artifacts ever since have remained a mystery. In the early 1980s, a man named Russell Burroughs claimed he stumbled upon a hidden cave somewhere near Olney. He apparently found human remains, metal weapons, and an ancient language carved into gold tablets. Stranger still, the language was Middle Eastern and European in origin and not from any known American Indian culture. What was astonishing about this apparent discovery was the fact that many artifacts recovered from the site strongly suggested that they were connected to the tomb of Alexander. The reason he claims his find has been covered up was realized by Virginia Hurrigan and Harry Hubbard, who upon deciphering the writings and cataloging the artifacts realized that they detailed numerous close encounters with extraterrestrial life apparently including a specific species of reptilians. Their work, which they maintain possession of, has been disclosed across the web, with a large selection of photographic studies of said objects. Are the powers that be hiding the fact that past rulers throughout history have been in contact with beings from other planets? Many have claimed through the subsequent years that Russell Burroughs' artifacts are frauds, and he still refuses to reveal the location of the hidden cave. However, it could also be seen as a smokescreen, obscuring from public view a real find of significant historical importance. Around the same time, many archaeologists came forward claiming Liana Suvalzi to have found the elusive tomb, just where it should have been all along. Yet they also claimed that her discoveries were indeed covered up, and it would seem with the help of Russell Burroughs' debunked find, it was successfully concealed from the world. Just what could there be in this tomb that is such a threat to modern understanding? What could be so earth-shaking that it would lead to an international cover-up? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Most people have never heard of Pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of Pareidolia. 
It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, Thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu, who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this 10th tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.